In this tutorial, we're just going to go over curly arrows. Now, curly arrows are particularly useful for reaction mechanisms, in particular in organic synthesis or in organic reaction mechanisms. So, what is a curly arrow? Well, imagine I'm an atom, and here I've got um, some electrons. And these electrons are all right while they're around me, but they might want to um, test out the water in some other atom or some other molecule. And in doing so, they just flick, flick over to the next atom. They don't actually leave me. They test the water first before they decide, hmm, I quite like um, being with this atom as well. So they'll form a bond. And in doing so, the other molecule must uh, lose electrons to accommodate the new set of electrons. Unless, of course, the, the reactant that you're attacking is positively charged, so it's actually vacant of electrons. So let's have a quick look at the different types of um, curly arrows and reaction mechanisms that they can be used for. So if you look in this example here, we've got the uh, initial curly arrow. It's got a beginning and it's got an end. Now the beginning of the arrow indicates where the electron-rich species is that's attacking electron-deficient species. So the electron-rich species is, is the beginning of the arrow. As the arrow goes, you see the, the end of the arrow has got two arrow heads in this example. That means there's two electrons travelling in that arrow. If it had one arrow head, then it would mean the one electron is travelling. And this is a kind of um, reaction mechanism arrow that, or curly arrow that you see in uh, free radical reactions, and we'll cover them later on. So let's have a look at an example. If we look in this example here, we've got, we've got methanol attacking um, uh, an isobutane, uh, bromoisobutane here. And as it attacks, you'll see that the curly arrow ends up in the middle of the two species that's attacking. Um, and that's to indicate that there's actually a bond being formed between the oxygen and the carbon. So it's, it doesn't go onto the atom, it goes in between. And that's very important because you're actually trying to form a bond across it. And remember, bonding in covalent species is just the sharing of electrons to complement the electron shell in both atoms. Also, look at this um, example. You'll see that the bromine's also got a curly arrow from the bromine carbon bond. And that's to indicate that bromine is actually leaving that uh, isobutane species. It has to do that. It's a bit like pouring uh, a bucket of water into a full bucket of water. It can't accommodate that many electrons, that molecule. So that the excessive electrons have to go somewhere. And in this case, they leave as a leaving group in the form of a bromide ion. So this, this kind of um, concept, if you will, these curly arrows, is what's called organic chemical synthesis. So we're actually synthesizing a new molecule from two molecules. Now, if you, if you remember, I mentioned that at the beginning of arrow indicates an electron-rich species, and the end of the arrow indicates an electron-deficient species. Well, if, you, if you notice in, in the last uh, example, it wasn't actually an electron-deficient species. But what happened was, the oxygen electrons tested the water, if you will, uh, just to see if it was a lower energy configuration if it attacked that molecule than it was as methanol. Or, uh, yeah, methanol, sorry. Um, and it, in this example, it, it was lower energy. Energy could be lost in that process. So that's why it proceeded. If you look at um, other examples, involving charged species. So we've still got our nucleophile, so that's the thing that attacks a nucleophile. And you think of the, the word nucleophile means nucleus loving. So the, the nucleus is a positive charged species, so a nucleophile must be uh, electron rich, if you will. So the nucleophile um, can attack uh, an electron deficient species. Those electron deficient species are called electrophiles. So electrophiles are electron loving species. And if you look at these examples here, we have uh, the nucleophile attacking uh, already positively charged species. Uh, and these, these go rather quickly as well. So in this case, we've got attack of the double bond. And we've got a brilliant leaving group as, as this uh, trimethylamine here. 
And what happens in this case, because you've got, you've got a nucleophile in this example that's negatively charged, and you've got a, a, an electrophile which is positively charged in this example, so the products are neutral from the reaction because the overall um, reactants were neutral as well because we had a negative charge and a positive charge which cancel each other out. So that's another thing to look out for as well when doing these reaction mechanisms. Make sure all the charges balance. And I'll put a few examples up of, of different types of reaction mechanisms for you to have a look at. Other examples where you've got um, uh, reactions involving charged species are things like the uh, Corey Tchaikovsky reaction here, uh, the Mitsunobu reaction, and uh, the Hoffman elimination uh, to give you um, amines. That's um, basically it, apart from one more example um, where you, you can have um, homolytic cleavage of a, of a bond. And this happens usually in uh, use, using some energy source such as ultraviolet radiation or something like that. And a good example is this is across a bromine bond. If this uh, is subjected to um, uh, ultraviolet radiation, the electrons can, if, imagine now I've got them in my hand here actually, imagine my hands are the bromine atoms here stuck together and the electrons as you can see here and then what happens in UV light, they get enough energy for them to separate out, okay? So the electrons are quite happy to sit on both bromine atoms like this and these are highly reactive species called free radicals and in this case you've only got one electron um, in each atom. So if you look to the, um, the other examples that I showed you before, there was two electrons travelling. In, in these kind of reactions well, uh, bromide uh, radicals um, are involved in, you have just one electron travelling. So that's the end of this introduction to curly arrows. There will be a lot, lot more information given um, to the side of this video uh, so you can do some further reading and exercises. So hope to see you soon. Bye bye.